Okay, so we're back with the uh, J plate. That's what I'm going to call it. J panel plate. Where we put in the amp, the connector onto the amp. We put the face plate in the front here. Nice little look. Okay, looks really good. All the knobs turn. You can push the power on and off. You can move the treble in the base. Everything fit perfectly. And it's nicely pressed in there, nice and tight. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is add the other two buttons here. We're going to add the coin button and I believe so the R2 button. And not every tool that we use is something we can buy. It's other tools like little templates are considered tools. Now, I printed these out on my printer. I'm not really looking at the aspect of the circle. I'm really looking at the center dot. The center dot will give me a uh, reference of where to start my uh, hole for where the button's going to fall. As well, in the template, I made a square border so that I can measure away from the amp and away from the bottom of where I want them to land. I want them to try to get as perfect as I can on both ends. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure one inch away from the amp to for distance okay and we're going to take something simple like scotch tape and just put a piece there to hold it in place like so simple piece Okay. And with that, we're going to take two inches from the bottom on one end. Let's get the tape ready. Makes it easier. We want two inches on one end. Let's do it this way better. Line up the uh, over here. Two inches. Perfect. Take it down. We got two inches there. And now we'll unpeel the uh, first piece. We already have the one inch away. And we're going to put two inches on this end. Let's do it the way we did earlier. We'll take two inches and right there. And we'll tape it down. Let's make sure. Is right. One inch there, two inches, two inches there, two inches there, perfect. Like I said, I'm not worried about the circle. I want the dots. The dots is where we're going to center punch and start our hole. Let's do it on the other side. Let's get that one inch. We're not worried too much about how that paper is going to fall. Just want those dots to fall in the right spot. So let me take the bottom. My lines on the box could be a little crooked. So let me take the bottom. And just 
press it down. Getting like a lift. There you go. There we go. Now it's flat. Let's take one more measurement. Make sure. Two on that end. Two on that end. One inch on this end. Okay, so now we have our little stencils right where we want it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the center punch tool. Also, you can buy this at Harbor Freight. I'll leave a link at the bottom. You're going to take the center punch and you're going to center punch the first dot. Boom. You left the mark. Now you're going to skip the second circle and hit the third circle. Boom, you left the mark. So you're going to skip the second circle and hit the third circle. Let's do it on the other side. Do the same thing. Hit the first one. Push down with your, try to get it as close to the middle of that dot you want, and push. Boom, you left the mark. And then, this one, again as close as you can to that center. Boom, you got your marks, okay? These are where the uh, coin buttons will go and your R2 buttons and if I'm wrong I'll correct myself okay so you got your mark so what you want to do is you take your stencil off and you'll see your mark through the other side your paper actually went and marked it as well you see you got the little dots you don't need the stencil anymore you can print those out as many as you can now I got my dots and I'm ready to drill a little pilot hole. So what I do is I take a small drill, drill bit, and my drill, and I begin with my first hole. On top of the garbage can, catching all the dirt. Okay. Now remember, it makes that little mess right there, but don't worry. You're going to uh, go further through with the uh, bit, the step bit. You got your first hole, your second hole. There you go. And if you notice, I'm going through the front with my drilling. I always said this. It is best to go through the front. You make less of a mess when you go through the front. You see? The holes on the front side are way cleaner than what's going to happen on your back side. You see? Because it's lifting up the, uh, the laminate off the wood and making a nasty little chip marks. But that's fine. We're going to go. We're going to make holes bigger with the uh, step bit. There you go. If it was just that easy and left like that, you got a nice clean hole. You could probably clean off the edges with a marker, but we are going to go bigger with the step bit. So what we're going to do is change out this drill bit and go for the step bit. Let me uh, get my button out for that first hole. Okay. So... We're going to start with uh, the left side if you're facing the panel, and that will be the red buttons. And I was right, it's the R2 button. That's going to go here, and the coin button here. Now you may ask yourself, well, why are you putting the coin button there, and other people are putting it on top? Well, other people are also putting in coin doors at the bottom, and I'm trying to give 
the effect that this is going to be the coin door. So pressing in the bottom for your your coin selection on some of your arcade games is is kind of the aspect I'm going for. Um, I'm not going to do a coin door on this. I just think it's too much work and it makes probably the cabinet a little too much heavy, which we don't need. Um, I don't want to be throwing in more money into the machine, even though it's a good, you know, aspect. It's a good, um, you know, nostalgia for a real arcade cabinet. And and you know, for some people, that's good. I like that. You know, let them do that. And what I want to do this is basic and simple as I can, and just put a coin button there and give you that feel like you're putting in the coin underneath the uh, the joystick. And It'll work just like a regular button and give you that coin selection each time. So we're going to start with the uh, first hole on my left side, which will be player one side, and the R2 button hole. And I'm starting again from the face plate. All right. I'm going to zoom out a little so you can see my work. And again, like I told you, start from the front, then work your way through the back. Let's start this slowly. You can go about three steps in, if not four, do four. I think I did like four there. Drop it. You see the mess it's making here? It's making a nasty cut up, cut up on the other side. Let me zoom into this so you can see. You see that? It's making nasty little cuts on the other side. We're going to clean that by going with the step bit on the other side. And you'll see how how much neater it gets. Watch. Go about two or three steps in. You see? Look how cleaner it gets. Look how neater it looks. Okay. I'm going to move this up. Look at that. You see that look? Look how clean it gets that way. When you go back and forth and you take your time. Okay. You got that, the front side. And you got the back side. Okay. Now, we're going to go back and forth. Probably another two steps in the front. And then test out the button. Let's test it out. It's better to test each time when you feel you've gone enough. You don't want to overdo the hole and you mess up the wood. Still not fitting. So let's go another step through the back. Test it out. Take one more step. 